Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, to be able to share with you some of the information that I am sure you already know. This is probably going to be the hardest task I have, which is to talk about something that you know more about than I do. But I hope that I can, at the end of the day, inspire you and give you a little hint, a little small thing that you didn't see in your radar, and that will help you move forward. Um, so a little background on myself real rapidly. I'm, uh, my friend Adam just introduced my name, Robert Jansen. But uh, one of the things that he said here, he said six challenges. I want to leave it with seven. Because it has to do a lot with me. So I was made literally in Japan. And then I was born in the US. First language I spoke was French in a way surprised in Brazil. My grandparents on my father's side, Dutch and German. On my mother's side, Swiss and Portuguese. So I'm a true mutt. And the seventh challenge I want to leave you with is culture. Because at the end of the day, it's people who make the difference. Technology, as fast as it's moving, is a whole bunch of zeros and ones. But let's get straight to it. Because I am here on behalf of Allegra and X Mines, who are our clients in internationalization. I've been doing cross border business development for over 30 years and doing now, last 10 years, early stage growth acceleration with a startup accelerator in Silicon Valley and in Brazil. And we're trying to apply all this new entrepreneurship tool set, toolkit, into the corporate world. And this is, we hope, to help you bridge some of the stuff that we see happening in the front lines, and then maybe I'll help you also in your corporate challenges. So we want to show to you the two main actions to achieve business agility, but, but, uh, do we have something working here on them? Uh, we did test drive it. It's not moving forward. Here we are. So our key takeaways actually are in giveaways. Because our previous slide talks about the two main factors. And they're right here. So I'm going to change this slide from takeaway to giveaway. We're giving away already what you want, what we want you to walk away with, which is client-driven, product-centered approach mindset, and a digital culture. So why do we think we need business agility? Well, there's a tsunami called digital transformation. I actually, DOD, who knows what DOD is? DOD? Department of Defense. No. It was, until this guy came along, this red bearded guy, and now DOD is digital or die. <laughs> Bottom line. Right? So digital transformation, if you look at what's you know, the opinion of major CEOs across, 80%, and this is a Gartner research done with 3,500 senior executives globally across the board and cross industry and cross function. And 80% are understanding that they're one of their biggest challenges is DOD. And they also realize that 90% of their priorities, if it's not supported by technology, they will fail. Now, digital transformation is impacting many organizations. Some think that's just like having a mobile app, or maybe having a cool digital presence on the web. Or perhaps he put a canvas in his meeting room, and now he thinks he's planning with canvas as well. Some others are more advanced, and they have AI, they have ML, DL and doing all kinds of automation, think they're ready for what they don't know still. But digital transformation is not only that. Uh, if you look at what's happening right now, out of the Fortune 500 companies, their lifespan from 61 years came down to 18. 75% of all the Fortune 500 companies that you know today in 2027 will not be here. So that's how fast we're going. Oh, wrong slide. Uh, so in the end, what does that mean? That means that the key measure for seeing are you going forward or not, has to do not anymore with revenue streams, with profit. It has to do how fast you react, how fast you adapt, how fast you're able to transform innovation into a product that the market will buy into. Um, 20 years ago, almost, I was in an event in India. 
uh, and the CIO of SAIC. And by then, 20 years ago, his CIO did not mean chief innovation officer. It didn't mean, sorry, didn't mean chief information. It meant innovation then. And he said, you know, going forward, most of us executives only have two main challenges. One is keep your eyes on the prize, on where the market is going, where the trends are sending you to go. Two, customer intimacy. And by that, it didn't mean that I didn't know the president's birthday and I will send her a birthday card. No, intimacy because I know more about his business than he actually does. So this is 20 years ago. He's letting us know that clients don't want vendors. Clients want strategic partners. So today, the measure is what's the frequency and you're able to innovate and put out a product out there that clients will adhere to. So this has to do with business agility. And business agility, this gentleman has something Hi, he wants to share. My name is David West, CEO of Product Owner at Scrum Dog I want to talk to you briefly about business agility. Firstly, I'd like to determine what business agility is. It's a bit of a buzzword, nobody's asking about it. But I, when I think of business agility, I think of three things. I think, one, it's about speed. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be super fast and not all agile businesses are the same speed. In fact, there are a lot of different speeds depending on the environment around them. You know, ultimately what we're looking at with agility isn't super fast speed, it's market determined speed. To be as fast as your customers and your competitors need you to be. Secondly, I think it is the ability to inspect. So, you can deliver value in a speedy way, but if you don't inspect that value being delivered, how it's being used, how it's being consumed, what your customers and stakeholders, people that are paying for it ultimately, care about that value, then you won't be able to respond to any changes that are happening around the value you're delivering. So the second one is in the ability to inspect. The third thing is really the ability to change. So you deliver at an appropriate speed, you inspect the results, and then the ability to, to actually adapt in response to the things that you learn. Now, you must be able to adapt at an appropriate cadence, and you must have flexibility to be able to do that. Now, that normally means you have to have minimal waste in your system, and you need, but you need to have enough slack in your system to effectively be able to change. So, that's what I think business agile is, or being a in agile business is all about. But don't take my words for it. Go and listen to Robert Janssen talk about uh, the two main actions to improve and to deliver on business agility. Uh, and the talk at CIO Insight Summit um, in Georgia on the 23rd. Hopefully you'll listen to Robert talk about this. He's got some interesting insights and uh, I'm sorry I can't be there with you. Have fun and be agile. So, uh, interesting, you know, I normally say that before the internet, we were only sure of two things going forward in our lives. We'll always pay taxes and we'll die one day. Now, after the internet, after this digital world's financial reality, there's four. We'll always pay taxes, we will die one day, but now we manage change on a blinking basis. And the fourth, we do never, we don't do anything else going forward by ourselves. It's a collaborative world. So those four absolutes. And if you look at what we're saying here with business agility, it's actually being able to respond rapidly to client, being focused on what the client wants. How many of you here, and please do raise your hand, have heard in your lifetime, focus on the client? Please, raise your hand. Yeah, I have, I'm sorry to say that you're all suffering from the myopia of the preposition. The client never wants your focus on him. He wants to understand his focus. So it's not focus on the client, it's focus of the client. And this is where business agility will help you to understand what that focus is. So you can deliver it time and time. And that's what makes you become client-driven, product-centric mindset. And, of course, the culture element will always play. So, when you look at the two things, and here's the giveaway again, 
We're looking at client-driven, product-centric approach. We're looking at culture change, and that it has to do with people. It has to understand that the valorization of a collaborator, uh, and it has to also understand that your response and speed will always be vital. Um, if business agility is adopted in several ways, and if we go to the next slide, we're going to see, and I think I probably have to get out of your way, but if you look at every single organization, you're talking about 437 mid-market executives that was researched or surveyed by Frost and Sullivan. So the organizations that had business agility embedded strategically Perform, outperform the ones that didn't, at least in 30% in every single category. <coughs> Customer satisfaction, business value, product quality, on-time delivery, driving innovation, and team productivity. In every single category. So what is a client-driven, product-centric approach? In this slide, we're trying to actually compare to what we think we have today in our organization, which is very project centric. You know, I deliver my project. Mission accomplished. It's done. Out of here. But today, no. Today is ownership. Today, understanding what the client wants, what is his focus, I become now focused on what he wants, and that's partner. So now I'm continuously looking to see what my client needs and wants. So I come from the backstage of taking orders, and then go on to the front stage, understanding what are the key drivers of my clients and my customers. So when we look at a plan driven approach at the end, we're just problem solving. We're solving the problems that our clients have. We're needs becoming slightly competitive. You no, know, I gotta see how fast. I said DOD is digital or die. Guess what? It's changed again. D D O D, data driven or die, and I will change it by the end of this presentation again. So, so how does a client-driven, product-centric approach help? Well, it helps generating more value because now I'm driving from the customer. I'm getting away with myopia, my myopia of the preposition. I'm creating new business models, and we'll show a few case studies in which companies that. You would never think they would go down that road, that path, and they are, and they are doing it successfully. So you create new revenue streams, you create new products. You envision a marketplace that no one else has been able to see. So a case study of this food distributor, which I just mentioned, a food distributor established 20 years in the market. He decides to go data-driven and sees that all of a sudden he has an opportunity to have new customers offering them small micro credit. He's now offering credit to his clients and to his clients' competitors as well. Because now he is a micro credit provider, not only a food distributor. Now who would think that a food distributor one day will become a financial institution? Number two, energy distributed in Brazil, EDP, uh, they're corporate driven and they also trying to understand how can I relate better with my client? How can I be in control of that relationship? And now everyone's going digital. So what do I need to do? I need to understand what are these digital touch points with my client and be there in every single one of them. Let them there and every single one of them be self-serviced, not rely on me. Rely on themselves because I gave them the platform. EDP has done that, and today, instead of only offering to the 3.4 million consumers they have in Sao Paulo, they're offering to 55 million nationwide, just because they've gone digital. Number three, oh, wrong button. And number three, this is an insurance company that also became product oriented, and they were looking to find a better result in their lead generation process. They were very poor and be able to actually make their pipeline go forward, move the funnel. And by applying a design thinking methodology, which I see every day, you know, it's funny, uh, startups hit in our accelerator and it's eventually want to see a business plan. Well, wait a minute, Robert. We don't do business plans anymore. We're a startup. This is no running. 
You say, wait a minute. You are a startup, yes. But the fact that you don't do business plans like you do in the old days doesn't mean you don't plan anymore. Yes, you do plan. You just use different tools like you do the Canvas. So Canvas is actually just a framework in which you do get rid of the topologies, the myopia of the preposition. You go there and find out what the client wants. Because that's what the Canvas does to you. Is to you validate hypotheses in the front line instead of coming with something that already made to see if it fits. So by using a design thinking methodology, which is the interpretership tools today, this case study, which is a large insurance company in Brazil, was able to uh, generate six times more lead generation than he was doing until then. So going now to the piece that I like most, and probably because I'm a mutt, you know, uh, it's the culture aspect. A lot of times the cultural aspect is overlooked by the organizations. So Gartner has what they call the continuous next with five imperatives. And one of those imperatives is, digital, is the culture. Out of the five top imperatives of going forward, Gartner has elected digital culture. And I like a lot the word ambition. It was previously goal. But what's the difference between a goal and a mission? Ambition carries an emotional charge. Go forward. A goal is just cold. Ambition has someone behind it going forward. So when you look at the ambition of the digital culture, they believe that that technology will improve their performance. They are willing to take risks, take new positions. They're not afraid. When you look at building digital businesses, they know, understand that digitalization of the companies is of foremost importance. It's imperative to stay forward, to stay alive in the future. So the ability of all of the digital culture is also the fact that I am able to adapt, the adaptivity. You know, uh, a little sidebar here, uh, Brazilian culture. You know, the Brazilian environment, as you probably heard many times over, different things going back and forth, it's a culture where we understand very well what it means hit the ground running and change of rules, adverse environment. You're constantly having to adapt to new scenarios that are constantly changing. So that has made a lot of resilience into the Brazilian professional layer because that's their daily lives. So culture is then one of the five, number one out of the five, processes for business agility. 46% of CIOs say that that's my biggest challenge. And of course, you know, we don't learn a lot of people skills. You know, we learn them through the life, we don't learn them through techniques. Uh, and we leave that part out. So when you look at digital culture, there's three components. There's leadership, there's the environment, and there are the skill sets. So let's look at the first one, leadership. It needs to be from top down. It needs to be transformational. The CEO needs to embrace that, listen, this is really part of our going forward, a part of our livelihood. This is how we will survive. It has to be focus of the customer, right? I have to understand what the customer wants. And it has to be also integrated. And what do you mean integrated? It's also integrated along all the collaborators. So it's not just for one tribe within the organization. It's for everyone. So, and it also means to be relevant. Relevant to the contributors means that w um, we make these immersion programs in the valley, bringing delegations from the, all over the world so they can spear it firsthand. Um, and we say five days, it's like a, a, a crash course. And one of the things that we show them is that the collaboration is at the center of everything that happens there. So they ask us, what's the first thing I should do to integrate myself into this environment? And so you should, first thing you should do is look to collaborate. Look for a project which you can volunteer about. Because that's what really brings everything together. And so it has to, your narrative as a CEO, as a leader, has to talk to everyone within your organization. Not just this one tribe, but everyone across the board. And when that happens, guess what? Out of those 3,500 Gartner companies interviewed, 
that were consistently to have the tone of digital narrative had a 2.4 times better performance than other organizations. They did not have consistency in their narrative of becoming digital. Leading by example, 2.6 times, and embedding budgets, operations, and processes into the narrative, 2.7. But only 5% of organizations are actually consistent enough. Number two, environment. So collaboration, it's a must. Uh, and IT, the, your department, the IT department needs to be the consulting arm. Instead of taking orders, it has to be going forward and empower the whole organization to become a thought leader in their own right. I call the LinkedIn effect. Uh, I used another word before, but half of the room didn't know what I was saying. Who knows what a Rolodex is? Yeah, so LinkedIn, the role of depth is LinkedIn, right? So uh, the LinkedIn effect is you promote and foster that they do connect because there's nothing greater and more powerful than the sum of all of us, than just a single one of us. And more and more self-service learning platforms. Empower them, let them be able to go there and auto-service themselves with all the knowledge and certifications they require. And the organizations out of the 3,500 that were consistent in doing and fostering collaborative and having their IT as a consultant and doing self-service, they were 3.6 times better performing than their other organizations. Number three, employees' competencies. So it's not just the knowledge itself and which he's involved with. It's actually having the skill set, the soft skills of being part of. Because yes, I know my stuff here, my needy greedy, but can I correlate? Can I integrate? Can I be part of, of the greater whole? So that, that political consciousness creates a collaborative fusion in which really makes it gel. It hardcores the whole center of the organization. So these three, the, this the third one also, it, when applied, it creates 9.9 .9 times better results when you have a knowledge environment, when you're able to adapt. So all of these components that belong to this vision of digital culture have all of them a great impact in the organization if done consistently. So at the end, you have a business agility that 78% uh, of top performers are using client-driven, product-centric approach. And again, you know, when we say client-driven, product-centric approach, um, one of the things, a little sharing with you again, uh, how many of you have been to Brazil? Anyone been to Rio? And who has been to Brazil and not to Rio? Go back. <laughs> you haven't been to Brazil yet. <laughs> Yeah, no, Sao Paulo is a great city too. Um, I was just partially raised in Rio, then of course, you know, I'm speaking for my backyard. But uh, again, uh, when you look at the client product driven pr approach, um, you're looking at a fact where uh, you're looking at a product of performing. Uh, stop here a minute. Okay, so going back and looking at how we operate in this culture, um, we are looking at a product-centric delivery process in which we can actually drive value every single time to the client. Uh, and top agility, business agility today, is where you can outperform, you can actually anticipate what is needed. And this goes now to DDOD, data-driven. Now it goes to the third. It's changed. It's IDOD, insight driven and oh die because it's not only driving data it's actually interpreting that data and transforming and you can only do that if you are client driven with a product centric approach so going back to the Brazilian case Brazil has grown very long time as a service driven market and for a long time coming to this country they had a, a challenge of becoming product driven and they learned it. But guess what? A cloud came about. 
and that cloud changed the whole delivery model. And now the cloud delivers product by a service. And that's part of the hardcore of our DNA and how to actually apply service delivery to a product approach. So when you look at the top reasons, so you know, 78% of the guys like you are doing it already. By 2020, organizations across the globe will have outperformed, the ones that have applied digital transformation and business agility will have outperformed their competitors. I like the next slide, because this slide here is the mid-market business agility adoption snapshot today. So I challenge you now and ask you, which percentage will you want to be? Do you want to be part of the adopters? Do you want to be part of the planners or the non-adopters? So you have almost 80% of your competitors thinking about something or going digital. Do you know what your competitors are doing right now? They're probably doing the same thing you are, looking how to become more digitally savvy. So concluding, and now we've changed the IDOD to this FDOD, is future driven. So when you're looking at all the things that impact the change, you start looking forward and try to anticipate these changes, and you become future driven. You become with the possibility of anticipating what your clients want, which is what the CIO, Chief Innovation Officer from SAIC at NASCOM in Mumbai in India meant 20 years ago, which is if you know more about your client's business than he actually does, you'll be able to anticipate for him what is his new growth path. So, Business agility in the end will be something where I can be responsive, I can be adaptive, dynamic, expedient, and above all, collaborative. And collaborative means internally, and it means externally. Internally, with all your internal clients, your collaborators, who are part of your team. And externally, with your market, and market being your competitors, your clients, your advisors, and everyone else that belongs to the value chain. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. So my friend Adam, I, I, we finished two minutes beforehand, so we have a panel now, and uh, he's supposed to bring in the, the panelists. You see, this is business agility, my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Jackson. Three. 